on a conversation with Lucius Aurelian. Welcome, Aurelian. Well, thank you very much, X. I appreciate the invitation, and it's great to be here. All right, I'm just going to share your your uh, channel for the viewers. And this is my first time hosting a chat, so we'll see how this goes. And there we have it. All right, for those of you that aren't aware, this is Aurelian's channel. Um, very interesting uh, um, array of topics that you cover on your channel. I, I like the uh, Hollywood deep dives. Actually, I find that very interesting. Um, but seem to be a broad range of uh, of research in your videos there. So I was inspired to reach out and and spark a conversation. Oh, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, so the focus of our video today, we decided together that uh, we would try to isolate our search um, somewhat and uh, look at the American Midwest. And we are going to start with Duluth, Minnesota. Um, this is a, a city that I have covered in a, a previous, it's actually my, my most successful video um, as far as view count goes, uh, one of my early videos. Um, I've chosen a few structures that maybe we could have a conversation about. Um, starting with the old Central High School here in Duluth. That's quite a marvelous. Uh, definitely look having a bit of a, uh, a Hogwarts look. <laughs> it's a good way to describe it, the Hogwarts look. Yeah, isn't it? It's uh, an interesting, interesting choice. <laughs> um, I think 1892, I do have a Wikipedia page pulled up here. Um, but uh, um, going by memory, this was uh, built in 1892. Let's take a quick look. Actually, we'll. Okay, here it is. Uh, Richardsonian Romanesque, of course. Of course. Good terminology. Uh, um, and they get into the particulars. Yeah, they always have to slap that label. Cornerstone laid in 1891 here. And. Uh, I mean, it's always so vague these timelines too, as far as uh, the, the start and the finish. With so many of these, we get a we get a very basic explanation for uh, for the construction, and you'd think it would be really very well documented. It doesn't seem to be the case, so I always find that interesting as well. When you have that obsession with the gigantic clock towers that they seem to be throwing on a lot of buildings at that time, whether they were considered schools or civic areas. It's quite fascinating. This huge clock that we need to put up there so everybody can tell what time it is, I guess. Yeah, and coming from a construction standpoint, um, the difficulty in adding this piece to the build, um, the, the amount of work um, that would that would take to extend that far into the into the sky and add all the inner workings of the clock mechanism and all that type of stuff for a high school um this is where the bottom seems to fall out for me a lot on these uh narratives for these uh buildings it just seems it, it seems unreasonable and uh implausible absolutely well i was just there in september and i walked around what remained of the building and uh, they're doing some construction work on it although like everything else where they're doing construction work it wasn't exactly clear what they were doing were they cleaning it were they restoring it you just see it's labeled as a construction site, but just like when I go around certain state capitals, it seems like they're doing some sort of renovation that involves scaffolding, but as to what it is, anybody's guess. <laughs> yeah, it's almost a cover maybe in some way. I think the spotlight is on a lot of these locations now with the amount of research that's going on in this, uh, this field. I'll say this old world research. Um, it makes me wonder, you know, are they, uh, is there like a counter movement against it to try to sort of cover up a lot of uh, evidence, I guess you could say. Well, either that or just trying to continue with their explanations that they have on it and trying to provide some sort of legitimacy. I think what they want to do is they want us to think that, okay, these are just buildings that are only standing because they're constantly doing renovations on them. If they didn't do these renovations, these buildings would fall over tomorrow. I think that's the perception they want us to have. Mm, I see. And then justification 
appreciation for so many that have been uh, torn down, I suppose. Well, exactly, because it's going to fall over that if would... we don't renovate it. And this... It's your tax dollars, so suck it up. <laughs> this is supposed to be a construction photo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I, I think uh, I did read. Yeah, yeah, they're doing some hard construction work here, aren't they? With the uh, all the scaffolds have been removed, and maybe it's just the lawn maintenance now that they're getting to. <laughs> well, you know what? It, um, it looks exactly like it did in September. But I did read I in Duluth that there was a movement to preserve this. <laughs> of course, there was. I, that? It looked exactly like it did when I walked around it in September. I mean, it looks exactly <laughs> the same. No joke. Just a, it's a it's a colored photo now. You'd see today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to tear it down. Apparently, in the seventies is what I read, and then the people actually were um, uh, people of the town were against that, which it's nice to hear. Amazing. Survived Just that. The Urban interior, the hall on the inside. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, which was was devastating, really, that Urban Renault 60s and 70s. Yeah. Um, what gets me to the broad spans, very, very wide spans, the structure, the structural elements to a lot of these old world buildings in such an early time period. Um, also something to marvel at and to these days we use cranes and um, a lot of technology hydraulics come into play a lot um, to to make these type of spans um, more easily constructible if that makes sense so again another part of the construction uh, um, element that uh, seems a bit far-fetched to me for, for many of these old buildings well, and it goes in with the, the whole logistics aspect of it. And I think that's something that uh, we tend to gloss over is the interiors. And that's something else I've tried to focus on in the buildings. It's hard enough to get up the exterior, but then you look at all the detail that went in the interior, like all the pillars and columns you see in every state column or every state capital. And in a building like this, it's just, it's absurd what they're trying to tell us. Yeah, the... And even even these days, construction, um, the finishing aspect of construction takes often so much longer than the, um, the, uh, the the bones of it, putting the structure together. So these uh, timelines that we're given for a lot of these, uh, um, not really accounting for the level of finishing that are, that's included in a lot in all of these buildings. They don't. They're all the old world buildings are finished in a spectacular fashion. So. Um, I'm, I'm moving on to the College of St. Scholastica here in Duluth. Um, that was what we just saw there. Founded in 1912. So wording here on the Wikipedia, and we use the Wikipedia because, uh, and I've heard you mention it in your videos, they're basically setting the narrative for us. Um, yeah. Well, and that's Giving their... us the, the story, the accepted story. I suppose. Yep. And that's their living document too. So it's not just that, but you can also see exactly what they want us to think in this moment. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Living document. So altering history. Wasn't going to say that, but thank you very much. You hit it right on the head. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so again, vague, right? Founded founded in 1912 by a pioneering uh, group of Benedictine sisters. Um, not really all that detailed as far as the timeline on construction, but let's look at the building itself. So it's a castle. <laughs> I mean, that, well, because how else would you have a school that needs to be a castle? <laughs> Uh, by the founded by the Benedictine sisters. Well, you know, because they this they is the were interior very... um and front entry of the uh, College of Saints. This is this get <laughs> check out the paneling, check out the ceiling, the light, the texture. amount of detail in that. That is just unbelievable. Floor, wow. Uh, yeah, there's no not a square inch has been overlooked as far as finish. And uh, I mean, if you tried to tried to panel a hallway these days in such a fashion, uh, um, you would be quoted the price so high that uh, the budget would be, uh, whatever you thought the budget for the, the build would be, would be blown out of, uh, so out of proportion that you would just paint the wall. 
you would just hang some <laughs> sheetrock and paint the wall. You just leave Which it plain these, now. These days. <laughs> Beautiful. Exactly, and actually, that's part of the modern day architecture. Is to uh, here. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make this full screen, so we can see it a bit better. Maybe that's a bit better. Um, yeah, it's it is amazing. The ceiling really, uh, really, uh, really blows me away. The way this is all sort of interwoven together, and and then that you've got some sort of uh, crown on the edge leading right into the panel work on the walls and the impeccable floors um that timeline really not accounting for no. any of this not at all this is the entire structure uh, remote too looking very remote um i don't know if you're familiar with the location at all in duluth i assume well, it's outside of the uh city limits but i don't know so i went and visited it and if memory serves it's on the northwest side of duluth and it's actually beyond the bluff that overlooks the entire bay area so i mean it's way out there it was nowhere near where the original settlement was and you know so just to throw up a castle out there mm. in that time frame you just have to ask questions about that i mean and it took me probably a good 10 to 15 minutes to walk the length of it. I mean, it wasn't something you just did like that. And I was moving at a brisk pace. So, I mean, it is large. Yeah. Well, the Benedictine sisters had God on their side. So there's that <laughs> when they constructed it. Well, that, it's about the explanation you left with because there's all kinds of amazing facilities all over the place that are isolated like this. And yet that's their explanation. It's this religious order that had seemingly infinite resources, even though there weren't even any people in these settled areas. And you see the story repeated over and over again. Yeah, it's uh, and then it's explained away in such a in such a fashion, too, that we accept that. You know, without any real explanation, we just accept it. Look, you can see here, <laughs> statues built into the architecture. Perfect stonework. Here, I've got a color one here, too. Let's jump to the color one. Here's the yeah. color version for us oh. to have a look at. That is gorgeous, the way that's all fit together. And I I, uh, I showed... Yeah, the stone... I, my, 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 my father's a bricklayer, and uh, I showed him this. Just the way that the stone meets with the uh, the corners, cement blocks, I suppose. Um, maybe a coating. I honestly don't know exactly how all those go together, but the amount of work that that would take to weave all that together, a time, the amount of time that would be needed is uh, uh, it is not explained in that uh, that a narrative that we're given. <laughs> uh, a couple more here. This supposedly from um, well, not this one. Sorry, this one. This supposedly from 1909, this photograph, <laughs> not, that doesn't really make sense to me because that's the year it, the cornerstone was laid. So yeah. either the dating on the, on the photograph is wrong or... <laughs> it's not like anybody yeah. can jump into the like world and figure out for sure. So just tell us anything and we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> they must be... Uh, Praying for the uh, rest of the the castle to be uh, to build here. This is a bit. This one has a sinister feel to my. I grew up in a Catholic uh, school system, so I'm sort of familiar with uh, with uh, how the inner workings, I suppose, of how how that works. And there's still definitely a, a sinister feel to this this photo. So I thought I'd throw it in there. <laughs> You get to see the arches too, and I mean we'll that's not something so easy to do is throw up all those arches in that grand hallway auditorium that they turned into. Yeah, that's here. Apple. No, uh, and also so not feeling new. Uh, like there, like there's a there's an age to a lot of these buildings that uh, it's a feeling that that you get, or I get anyway when I look at a lot of these. I like the lights as well. The old light fixtures are something nice to look at and of course the woodwork mm. and the tile work it's all impeccable yep and i'll explain that away by saying well they built it to look so, old from the start here's another school the indian elementary yeah it was the style <laughs> right R R richardsonian romanesque yeah. or whatever they want to call it classical and our architecture that's a whole different uh i had a good conversation with uh, an architect from seattle matthew um 
and he's uh he's a real wealth of knowledge on a lot of that kind of stuff uh, um he can educate me on a, on what they're taught in school as far as how architecture came about and then the discrepancies with uh, what we're seeing in the old world and i find that really interesting as a carpenter looking at that <laughs> no doubt about it that's a beauty but this you know reminding you that school but scaled down right yeah and yeah, elementary school this is, is what it looks like now of course you got to take the tower off um because it was unsafe i, I assume that's the explanation. <laughs> it was unsafe. Yep. It still still looks pretty amazing today. I didn't get to this one, but uh, this is very impressive still with what remains. And the the foundation stones that you see and I've noticed that in smaller It stores. really is. Yeah. It's yeah. uh mm -hmm. This part you, here. You see that in a lot of smaller buildings too. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice, uh, yeah, the nice style of build for sure. Okay, I had to put this one in there. A uh, bit of a strange, obscure story with this one. The Park Terrace Apartments, supposedly built 1891. Yeah, right. Torn down in the 30s. Naturally. Yeah, and. Uh, basically the ruins of it are still there there uh, you know just the vague uh you know it's all grown over but you can see steps and you can see some bricks and stone and stuff like that but it's uh it wasn't built over with anything as far as i could see uh, interesting you got a little door down here i think the from what the account says the population of duluth in 1890 was about 30,000 and it had gone up from 3,000 in about 10 years it's something ridiculous like that like everybody just decided to head to duluth minnesota in the middle of nowhere yeah. and then they just threw these amazing yeah i do have that let's pull let's pull that up here we go so yeah you have 850 uh, percent <laughs> well not reaching 100,000 till 1930 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eight hundred percent. You like that? No, yeah. no worries. We've got it. No, right. Getting your horse it, it's an explanation, up. honestly. This curve seems to repeat itself too. <laughs> <laughs> three thousand to thirty-three thousand in ten years. So they had to be building houses as well for the, to live in. Uh, you know, along with all these structures that we see. Well, and then while that was going on, it's the closer you look, the the less plausible it is. Isn't yeah. It, really? and, and while all this was going on, while they were building all these things, they also dug out that canal because even though they had access to the harbor, it was on the Wisconsin side. And of course, Minnesota couldn't have that. So everybody got their picks and shovels and went out there and dug the canals themselves. And they tell that story, honestly. <laughs> and then the winters in Duluth, I assume, are similar to the winters where i am like we're full-on winters oh yes uh, they snow snow ice, and you cold you also have probably more terrain change in that part of minnesota than anywhere else and i remember little house in the prairie tv show was set in minnesota and they showed mountains because they filmed it in california but in minnesota the closest thing you're going to find to a mountain is that bluff that overlooks duluth and it's it's not easy to get around there when it snows and it's icy i mean i mean well just look at the building here imagine trying to throw that sucker up when it's in the midst of winter and you're trying to put in those stairs. <laughs> Say nothing of the foundation. Yeah. Uh, and then dig a canal too, I was thinking. Like, <laughs> Piece of cake. Uh, just Jeez. good hard work. It'll do it. Hmm. So the, the setters of the narrative, I think, uh, I, I didn't think, I don't think they ever expected people like us to look into it and poke holes in it. I think they had it. They figured it was all wrapped up and, We'd always be labeled as crazy for even suggesting it. So <laughs> that there's something well, wrong with their story. Well, and it, and it seemed to be pretty effective then, but I don't think they they tolerated it. I'm sure there were people back then who questioned it, and we know what happened to them. And did a recent video on that dark story. Yes, I did see that as well. And getting into what what to do with people that question the narrative, right? And uh, the, the institutions, I have one in this uh, as well that we can get into. Interesting that the Antiquitech on here too. Oh yeah, it's all over. I mean, that's what I've, or weather vanes, maybe if that's what you want to yeah, call Yeah, weather vanes, sure, okay. Why do you need that many weather vanes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, right. And just and the intricate shapes you see too, and the variety of shapes. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've got the the circular design. You've I'll got try to keep moving design. here so we can uh, okay. get more visuals in. <laughs> yeah, right. And when you when you get into the research of the uh, I don't know if I'm using the right word. Uh, the cymatics and the ether and the harnessing of energy, um, free energy. You get into some of that research and the shapes that can be used to channel that energy. And these type, these, these shapes we see in the Antiquitex seem to be, uh, that seems to be what we're looking at is a way for energy to um, be harnessed, I guess you could say. It all adds up from what we see. Mm -hmm. Post office, long gone. So this is a good photo. I like the old crisp, really, really clean photos so we can zoom right in. Well, and it, and it showed they had that capability to, Just to, get to an take idea those kind of photos. Of, it's incredible. Yeah, so when we see a construction photo, that's basically a haze with a couple sticks um, as an explanation for, for the how it was built. I mean, how, how come I don't get one at, a quality, at this quality? Especially some of these structures, they must have been, if they were built in the time we're told, they must have been, um, would have been the story of the day. Like, oh, we have the high school, central high school going up in, in Duluth. Um, we got to take pictures of the process. <laughs> whoever's in town that does that, you'd think would have been there documenting the process. Well, especially since what what else was going on? You know, that's what you really have to wonder. That That never seems to be a question that's asked is, what else was going on that took precedence over this? You know, I mean, you, you get an idea that winters were harsh then and that people had difficulty surviving. They were out there in the middle of nowhere and yet they were able to do all this. And oh, no, don't, don't document it. We'll just take maybe one or two pictures. and mm -hmm. oh, that, That's good enough. Have a nice day. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Check this one out. Have you seen this one? I have seen that one. And that, it's, it's all good. It's it's another one of those amazing towers with portals on it. And I saw a much smaller scale of that kind of architecture in the town of Janesville in Wisconsin. And Janesville is an interesting town because it's as though they want to keep all attention focused on the interstate, I-39 that runs right down there into Illinois, north-south interstate. But when you go off the interstate about two to three miles and you go into the downtown, huh. you see a bunch of small buildings that have this similar style of architecture. Now, it's not quite this dramatic. I mean, you know, here you have what looks to be a sphere with some amazing portals on it. It's Whoa. quite remarkable. So that's interesting. So you're saying the interstate, um, the construction of the interstate has taken people away from viewing a lot of the old world architecture. That. That's interesting. Well, it, it's that I've never, driven never through Gainesville for years, and they've always seemed to be working on I-39 <laughs> as though they don't want people to be involved there. It's it's really fascinating. And don't go look in the downtown. And, and you see this all over the place where they try to divert yeah, attention that's really interesting. here to there. And they're very obvious about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the Masonic Temple, <laughs> um, supposedly. Although I did find another Masonic Temple in Duluth. So they had a couple. This is interesting, though. Let's, so check out the side here. Mm -hmm. um, you have all this going on, which is supposedly the opera house or theater. And then, then let me show you it from this angle here. Just going to let the dog out while you have a look at that. All right. Different, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um... that's, isn't that, that's strange to me. Well, it's almost like you're mixing what appears to be something more modern with something that we're told is more, is older. It's really bizarre. It's a bizarre amalgamation of both styles. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and there's the old, you... which goes together. This, this all goes together nicely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Piece of cake. No worries. And then. And this one is, uh, yeah, it's, it's different. So I thought that was, I don't know, a little confusing for me, for me anyway. And you and me both. Also a supposed construction photo here. Looks like a de deconstruction photo to me. That's really interesting. I don't, I don't know what to make of a lot of this. This is the old building, though. The, this is supposedly laying of the cornerstone ceremony. What cornerstone? But, uh, yeah, cornerstone. <laughs> already laid there guys 
<laughs> a little late on that count. Yeah, it's. I mean, I will say you actually see, you right? actually see people there, which is a lot more than what you usually get. Normally, there's not a soul to be seen in these photos, and they'll have all kinds of reasons for that. But I mean, at least you see people there. Although, who knows what the real story on it is? Well, it seems often it seems to be all or nothing. On this, you either get a photo with crowds or or a photo with nobody. <laughs> That's what's Wait, fascinating about these it. Guys hanging out up top there. And, proud of the work they've just completed, I guess. And, and you know, I, I can't tell you how many photos I've come across where they show people chilling on the roof of these amazing buildings, like Union Station in Kansas City in this amazing photo. Let's get up on the roof. How the heck did they even access the roof in Union Station in Kansas City? It's huge. You're up 100 feet in the air. It's not like they have a stairway that went right to it. And you, you see a lot of people up there. I, I never understood that concept. Hey, let's get high. No problem. <laughs> yeah. And is it, is it, I see that all the time. And I'm wondering, is it fakery or is it, you know, uh, yeah, that's strange. Well, it's just like those uh, construction <laughs> photos of the New York City skyscraper. We got left of it. Oh, wow. That's, that's still beautiful. Well, apparently. Yeah, those are those are fakes, eh? I think uh, a lot of the guys having lunch on the steel beam. I think a lot of people have uh, have done some photo analysis on those. The skyscrapers you you mentioned in New York City, mm -hmm. are so popular. Those. I mean, if I'm twenty stories up, uh, the wind is probably ripping up to, at that point, up at that uh, height in a city, <laughs> and I don't know if I'd be. <laughs> having my lunch on a beam dangling from the crane yeah look. i mean maybe i mean you do see these uh hardened construction workers the mohawk uh, if i don't know if you've heard of the mohawk iron workers are pretty pretty amazing climbers uh, but uh it seems implausible especially with their sunday best on well, you see sometimes in those photos well exactly and you know i can understand it if it's a professional and someone who does it all the time but then they also swing these stories of well these weren't professionals we just did this with day labor like wait a minute you just pulled people off the street and they came in they, and they helped you build these amazing buildings they threw up state capitals and all this cool stuff and yeah just day labor i mean <laughs> yeah no i know it's it's, it's so far-fetched like no one will question. You want to look it, at Des Moines? Yeah. Let's look at Des Moines. Yeah, pull up Des Moines. And you, you've been to Des Moines as Quite well. Quite extensively, yeah? and numerous times through my life. Yeah. Equitable building. <laughs> so, yeah. So I chose a couple for us to look at. Um, 1922 to 1924. Um, let's have a look at it. There's a yeah, that's a beauty. A what a beauty. Um so yeah, you have these the skyscrapers, right? The uh they 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 lump a lot of these into the twenties. But they still have a look like it's there was I think Gothic comes up in this this style. Uh, I think for the, the look on this building. Yeah, I mean, it, you could say it's gothic, but then when it's 20s, they always love to throw out Art Deco, even though they also say Art Deco didn't come out until after about the mid-20s from mm -hmm. some exposition in Paris, naturally. But then you can find examples of earlier built buildings, such as the aforementioned Union Station in Kansas City, where you clearly see Art Deco, but it was built in 1914. So who's to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they can't even get their story straight. <laughs> back and forth there's a there's a construction photo there's a one for you so yeah well, at least we've That's, got uh, a little th bit more that tells you that confirms for you that this is built in the 20s yeah okay so this looks almost like a drawing <laughs> if you look back here <laughs> it's hey, faith fades off into nothing <laughs> i don't know i'm not buying it i i, I just i don't buy it i think there's Honestly, like the way I look at the historical narrative, the timeline, I think uh, World War II was a hard reset of our memory. Honestly, I think it's it was it had been going on. Anything before that is haze, as far, and very difficult to discern what's. Uh, well, you know, it's really it's really easy when you can you, trust as yeah, far as any of it goes. When you try to for a lot of people, 
when you try to verify any historical account, you'll come up with three or four contradictions to everything, especially once you get before 1939. It's crazy, but it's true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there's a, there's must be some sort of a final scrubbing that went on and then, a, and then a hard reset. And then of course you get the Hollywood, um, narrative coming in the TV sets, entering the homes and all that type of stuff. And, um, yeah, it's, I don't know, hard to trust, hard to trust any of this, uh, what they tell us about any of this. Well, it's when they started their long, slow... it's spectacular, really. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, and the story with Iowa and Des Moines itself is very interesting and riddled with issues. Like, well, like they yeah, said that, uh, so it became a state in the late 1840s. And then by 1861, they sent over 10% of their entire population to fight in the United States Civil War or the War of the Rebellion, as all the monuments still call it then. It's quite interesting. War of the Rebellion. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then here they just threw up Des Moines at the same time right afterwards because apparently they just so loaded you mentioned <laughs> There must have been a fervor post-Civil War everywhere. There must have been a fervor to build, right? There must have been a real motivation to build everywhere. <laughs> right. Well, you know, because wars don't cost anything apparently. Except for all the fires and, and yellow fevers and cholera and <laughs> all that getting in the way. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, what does it tell you about uh, American history and history in general, right? When when you really start, it's, uh, the Civil War is, a, is an interest is an anchor point too, I think, in a historical narrative as far as a, a pivot to to the from the old world to the new world. That, that's what it looks like to me from my research, anyway. Well, they go back and forth on it all the time, and how you're supposed to even view the Civil War. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's funny too because I'm I'm from Canada, but we uh, we get a healthy dose of American history and in, in our uh, consciousness, I guess you could say, not so much in our, our schooling, but in comes through pop culture more so than anything else. So we all are quite aware of the inner workings of what we're told went down, according to the official line. You know, even though we're, we're not American, it's uh, it's interesting that way too. Well, they even still try to tie that in the history. It's, you know, how they try to connect everything in the stated history, you know, sort of like how the United States is connected to the United Kingdom and the revolution. And it was because of taxation without representation. And then as soon as the United States achieved independence, they're gathering militia forces to go crush whiskey farmers who are opposing attacks in Pennsylvania. So, but that wasn't right. <laughs> we'll tell you what's right. We'll tell you when it's okay to revolt mm. the government, but here it's not right. So just suck it up and pay your taxes. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. And the struggle with the crown against the crown, right? The uh, yeah. So Polk County Courthouse, Des Moines. Um, I got a little write up here. Let's have a look at it. Built in 1906, just 1906, no start year. So are we to assume that's just all done in that one year? Peace cake. I can do it. Bow art style. Proudfoot and bird. <laughs> it's always two. Always two. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. There it is in all its splendor modern day. No biggie. Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because um, Des Moines, Iowa was considered kind of the forgotten city of the Midwest there's a, there's until a, uh, the, the insurance companies relocated there. And that was in the late 80s. And that's when they threw up the 801 Grand Building. And I did actually see that okay. building go up. Okay. But nothing you really see in the 801 Grand Building compares to anything that we're looking at. And that building was built uh, at the tail end of the 80s, 89 to 91, if memory serves. And it does not compare to anything we're looking at right now at all. It's taller, but that's about okay. it. Huh. Yeah, interesting. So obscuring, I think even when you search for this particular building, if you don't know specifically what to search for, the Polk County Courthouse, there it, it just seems to me when I when I'm searching that the, you'd think this one would jump right out at you, like here, this is beautiful. Take a look at this um, when you're doing a, um, a search for photos of Des Moines. But 
you have to kind of sift through to really get um, these and know what you're looking for. So well, maybe obscured in that way too. I don't know. I mean, that's me uh, putting my tinfoil hat on, but it seems a bit strange sometimes when I look for these and find it more difficult than it should be. There's a recurring theme you get in Here's Des Moines. The oh, that's beautiful. That, that interior with that skylight, it looks a lot like the Iowa State Capitol. You'll see the exact same thing there too. Mm-hmm. Even though it was built 30 years apart. Sure, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we we always talk about the uh the basement windows the lower levels to these places excavation needed um they all have them they all have them you can see them here and here oh yeah you want to be able to look outside when you're in the basement and it's easy to build why not do it So, like, uh, narrative, historical narrative for these time periods, I mean, I guess 1906, maybe they're introducing some heavy-duty machinery for these excavations, but that's, the like, a major hurdle um, or a major, um, the excavation part of a job, a large job like that, and how deep you have to dig for these to have a solid foundation, um, to me, is one of the dead giveaways that we're looking at. Again, holes in the, there's massive holes in the story. Um, because are we to are we to expect that they had shovels and and lots of people? Is that the explanation for the excavations on these? That seems to be what they try to imply. Like if you look at the original construction photos of the Iowa State House or the Iowa State Capitol, that's what they show is what appears to be a lot of people with shovels around these gigantic granite stones. It's quite fascinating. They don't show you any more than that, but that seems to be the inclination they're trying to give is yes, everybody got their shovels and bam, dug out the foundation. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Manpower is, explains it away with manpower and it's just not, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. This is still the Polk, the other side of the dome in that Polk County courthouse. Yeah, and you, you see you see similarities oh, to so many other domes. And, of course, I love the intricacies on the columns that you always see as well. Like, yeah, why not? We can we can do all this in the county courthouse in the early 20th century in Iowa. Piece of cake. We got this. We can't do it now. We don't do it now, that's for sure. Look at that, eh? Yeah. Some sort of marble, maybe. Very looks exactly shiny. like the um, yeah you know, the marble that you see. Everything seen. encased in stone. Yep, it, it looks just like what you see in the Iowa State Capitol, where you have that same type of marble, that granite, that sandstone. That's what they'll call it. And you go up and you knock mm-hmm. on anything in there, and mm-hmm. it is hard as can be. There is no facading anywhere. It's it's solid, hey. Eh? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I, I wonder what, what was the old, what did the old world really look like? You know, you have these courthouses in every county down there in the states. They blow me away. Like they're obscure. These are obscure locations with amazing courthouses. Um, there must have been so much more, so much more that uh, we don't see anymore. And these are just what, what remained after whatever happened. Well, what I, have a, I'm thinking. I have a theory that what they did was they targeted the smaller rural areas where it would be much harder to explain these more elaborate constructions and these structures and they demolished them. And it would probably be a little easier there to achieve that demolishing. Although again, you're talking about manpower. So who knows what exactly was going on, but you you get this feeling that Mm -hmm. there were a lot of more amazing structures that were isolated that they tore down. And then the ones that they couldn't, well, they had to come up with an explanation for them. It's an asylum. It's a church. It's a seminary. It's a convent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So they just didn't have the logistics or the um, the manpower to to get rid of these things. So they have to explain them away. Hmm. That's interesting. Now, I, I I have the uh, interior of, of the um, Des Moines State Capitol, but uh, I don't have I don't have an exterior shot, believe it or not. But well, we, we've probably all seen it here. Look. Let me just do a search just so just for for the sake of uh
I mean, this one, you could do video after video on this structure. This is, this is an unbelievable, unbelievable structure and a dead giveaway as far as I'm concerned. Well, and when, whenever you drive into Des Moines, whatever direction you drive into it from, especially if you're coming from the north heading to the south, I mean, you will see this thing from miles away. And it's still even more prominent than the 801 Grand Building, despite the 801 Grand Building being twice its height. It still seems more prominent. All attention goes to this. And that's why I refer to it as a palace. Mm. I, don't, I don't know how else you describe it. It's a palace. Mm. Mm hmm. It really is. This could be in St. Petersburg, right? Has a feel, has a bit of a feel to it that that we attribute to the old world, which is the old world, but in the new world, <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, it, make, it makes perfect um, sense. And I, I even expect... So there's it. the outside for those of you. Oh, yeah. And I, I even took a photo of it with the Soldier and Sailors Monument, which is a big column that's right next to the Iowa State Capitol. And I compared it with Trajan's column and the building behind it, and they look exactly alike. And there's over 1,500 years between the structures and the columns, and yet they look so similar. I mean, are you in Iowa or are you, are you in Rome in Italy? Who knows? Yeah, 1,500 years. So we're told. So we're told. Exactly. <laughs> Timeline distortions. Hey? Look, look at this. You know, this... I don't know. Well, that's in the library there and access this, to the library. I have to pull my jaw off the floor every time I see this photograph. Yep. I mean, you can, Is it? Yeah. I, you, I you can go so. in there and you can look through the doors at it, but uh, to actually get in there and look at the books or whatever else they have, it, it's limited. At least when I went there, I don't, I don't know if that was a temporary situation or what, but they had certain parts of it you could go into and other parts you just had to look through the door windows and, you know. What would, what, who would that be limited to? It's a good question. No idea. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Interesting. There it is again. No biggie. <laughs> There's that skylight. Uh, it's just a four, yeah. one, two, three, four, five story library. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mind blower, eh? This this one is. But so many are. But this has got to be one of the best. And yeah, American Midwest, eh? American Midwest. Mm -hmm. in, in the state that's one of the least populated or most sparsely populated and is known for Senate yep mm -hmm. yeah and the stereotype is American Midwest is what do they call them the flyover states is that the same thing yep that's what the people on the uh, coastal areas will typically refer to it as people from Los Angeles or New York but you know who knows if they even say that that's just something that popular culture throws on us you know it's just like with the American South they want you to think that everybody is uneducated and they're still living in the Civil War down there it's kind of funny I mean that, that those are the perceptions they try to push on people across the nation well not just across the nation across the world like it's the same here it's the same perception you don't want to there's no point going to the midwest check out california check out new york it's yeah it's pop culture for sure well and then interestingly yeah. enough no, i think i'll check these out it, it does it, will. it does fit into the narrative though that you can explain stuff like this in new york city and los angeles a little easier so if you go visit those areas oh yeah there's a big giant civic building in los angeles that makes sense they had a large population no it's in new york city well new york city's always been there for hundreds of years so that makes sense but oh yeah here's that photo from the the foundation of the state capital in Iowa. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're spot on with that. That's exactly what what it is. It's so it makes you wonder: is is the fitting in of this 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 historical narrative with all these pop culture references, how it all ties together with the deception, right? It's a uh, we'll allow for it in New York. We'll allow for it in Chicago. We'll allow for it in L.A. Although L.A. is pretty pretty new to be honest, but uh, because of population sizes, right? But uh, we won't allow for it in places like Des Moines, so you may as well just fly over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the excavation. There's a basement, guys. You got to go deeper than that. Uh, yeah, well, it's okay. We got this horse with the spark. You got to go deeper. <laughs> <laughs> work harder, work faster. Except for that guy sitting there on the, the granite block. He's got his legs crossed. Yeah. <laughs> or... <laughs> it, well, that's the boss, right? He smokes. <laughs> 
He sits there and smokes. <laughs> <laughs> Big faster. I, I like how most uh, everybody's a few, few more of the capital we've all seen, but uh, or we've both seen. But. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I know John Levi. I took a look at this in one of his videos too, and noticed the aging and weathering on the building, and of course the white skies. But there's your construction photo of naysayers. Forget our yeah. forget our questioning the historic horse the historical narrative because we have proof right here. Proof that they built it then. Yeah, scaffolding proves everything. Yeah. And turned it into that. You can actually see the uh, soldier. Yeah, you can that see the soldier yeah. the Those right there on the right. Right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, huge column. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Okay, I got one more building in Des Moines, and then maybe we'll uh, shift over to a, a very small location that I have chosen. Um, Victoria Hotel. So, torn down in the 60s. Um, and you can... You can really still find references to the Victoria Hotel. If you go into the downtown of Des Moines, there's a restaurant there called Roca, a restaurant on Court Avenue. And they have some pictures in there, some very interesting pictures that, of course, show the streets covered with mud and everything else that's just utterly absurd. And yet you have this amazing, beautiful hotel that just rises from it with all this incredible, detailed architecture. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, here's an old uh, old depiction of some of what you might have found in the interior, although it's all a bit hazy. But uh, anyway, quite 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 the structure, quite the city, um, old world beauty, I would say. And here's a here's a, it altered later on down in the narrative, as they as they do take the tops off, right? They like yeah, to take the tops off. Piece of cake. You can take the top off a building like that. And, you know, probably took them a day to do it. At least <laughs> tell us. Okay. Yeah. There. There. Right. So yeah. let's take, <laughs> take these. It must have been a wind issue, right? They must have been worried. Uh, must have been a wind. Yeah. Safety. In the name of safety. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to see the if you don't mind. And, uh, and uh, let's see here. I'm going to take us to, and I sort of did this on purpose. So I, this was almost like this, taking a dart and throwing it at the map. Uh, not a location I'm familiar with in any way, but I thought it would be interesting because of the size. I looked at Dodge City, Kansas. Have you ever heard of this place or? been there or any of that driven through i have not driven through there i've driven around it on every angle and it certainly has a lot of connotations with the west and i um, trying to remember i think it was wild bill hickok supposedly worked there i'm not i'm a little hazy on uh, my ancient west history as they called it on star trek mm, yeah because it's definitely <laughs> yeah it's a it's definitely a, a setter of the wild west narrative uh in the states is from what i saw i just thought it interesting because of the size and so we'll start with the uh the population demographics here and you can see modern day a very very small location twenty seven thousand. Oh, oh there we go twenty seven thousand people yeah modern for day, but we're going to be looking in this time frame here and for context in the Midwest of the United States, pretty much anything over 20,000 is considered about a, a mid-sized small city, just for context. Even to this day, you know, you have anything over 20,000, you're probably on the smaller side of what they consider a small city. Okay. Small city. Yeah. That, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but not really not much for population let's say most of the photos I'm going to show you are coming right up into 19 teens, maybe so 3000, 4000 tops. Right. So, um, I took a little in-depth look at this location just to poke holes in the narrative. And I thought we might have fun doing that. <laughs> Light us up. Okay. What do we have here? So this is a bit of a write up on the location itself. Um, cattle trail, not, not a lot really going on. 
peak years of the cattle trade in Dodge City, 1883 to 1884. But really, we saw in the population, not many, uh, not many people living there. Nope. Right. So let's look at some of the architecture in Dodge City, Kansas. <laughs> City Hall. Yeah, yeah. You got have that nice, amazing tower, and you got the huge windows, and I don't know how many bodies they threw at this one. <laughs> Yeah, bell, yeah, bell tower yeah, in here. Yeah, it probably only took three people to haul that yeah. bell up there. Making sense according to the popu population. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought it'd be fun just because of the size of of the location. Just to, I find this everywhere. I honestly, I literally could throw a dart at the map and uh, pull these types of structures up from all these small locations. So, here's another one: St. Mary of the Plains Administration Building. Dodge City, Kansas, early 1900s, we're looking at, right? Photographs, postcards from, so I remember a small handful of people living there. At the yeah, administration building, right. Yeah, the home of the Red Demons. <laughs> wonder where they got that from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. What? Public library built in a circular fashion. Oh yeah, that old that old rotunda. And whenever you see like a rotunda like that or some some circular roof, I mean to me that that is as far away base. from anything classically American. It's just crazy when you see stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a whole another level level of uh, um, engineering, architecture, and difficulty in building a whole different level, really. So. But Dodge City, Kansas had it, and it looks like they had it very early on. And of course, you can see the, the those uh, foundation stones you're talking about here as well. Same look as we've seen in other structures. <laughs> oh, yeah, the courthouse. Uh, oh, we had, of course, they had an old courthouse with the columns. <laughs> you, you wonder if it, maybe it was supposed to be a bank. Uh, bank you know, it was too big for the banks. So they said, oh, let's, let's move the, the government seat here. <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that because this is also the courthouse in Dodge City, Kansas. So they weren't so, satisfied with that courthouse. One of these is easier. <laughs> they needed two. two. The gunslinging. There's too much gunslinging. <laughs> yeah. The courts were backed up. Absurd, right? <laughs> even, even look at the four. Oh, yeah, the wall. Who's building the stone walls in, in Dodge City, Kansas? Who's building those? Not, not even the building. If we just forget the buildings there, the, who's building those stone walls? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you, you, anyway, you see it with here's, here's what we expect, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is what we expect, right? Dodge City, Kansas, 1872. A couple. Uh, Couple gable roofs, single stories, no basement excavations, all dirt for the horses to comfortably walk on. That's what we expect. Awesome. Here's the first house in Dark City. <laughs> in, you know, you know what I think of is they got to building. Yeah, I, I think of that. I think of that whole little house in the prairie narrative, where you know, in reality, they say the Ingalls family, when they lived in Walnut Grove, Minnesota, that they lived in a dugout that was kind of like that. Then you watch the TV show, and no, Pa had built this amazing two-story house and everything, and you know, it's just it's funny how it just all bleeds together like this. <laughs> oh, for sure, I, it's all part of the deception right like 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 you you dig, dig pretty deep in some of the hollywood um movies and i sort of I, I bring up hollywood every once in a while in my my uh videos is like hollywood is like is is the major mind control uh mechanism i think of of our uh well not the but one of the major um to to give us a perception of history a false perception of history right with and i think that's that you know little house on the prairie and everything is sort of factored into the, the wild west <laughs> the old what the, the westerns from the 50s and all that type of stuff right 
Well, and it, it's funny because it's all part of the all part of the resetting of the narrative. You, you go back to it, and you can see how they flip flop on certain themes too. Like one second they'll depict Native Americans as being you know people who just needed to be exterminated, and then not five years later they were unfortunate victims, and now they're the good guys. It, it's hilarious. You can see how they just switch the narrative back and forth. And you can see them doing it. Nobody even questions it. And that, that's what blows my mind. That's why I look at stuff like that. Because they just literally do it overnight. And nobody seems yeah. to think, ah, no big deal. They're the good guys now. Well, I thought they were the bad guys. Depends what movie you're watching. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. That's the, and then if you're under the spell, then you're just going along for the ride, right? If you start to question it, then uh, it does start to fall apart the more you look at it. But apparently, this is Second Avenue, Second Avenue in Dodge City. In looks like what thirties, twenties. Uh, they had all the nice brick, brick structures with all the uh, antiquitech. So a nice downtown for didn't, didn't take long for them to build up. Town Check this one out. Wow. <laughs> so, what, yeah, for what, a couple what's even, what's even the third point? ward school? Well, what's even the point of that cupola and that tower? Is that so you know you could take kids up there and you know look, look at the horizon and look at the stars from the tower? I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> What's even the point of it? You, you see that in a lot of schools, the, these amazing towns. No, 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 no. <laughs> you got it. A really, you, you got it wrong. It's de that's the detention room. That's where that's where <laughs> the kids go for detention <laughs> up in the tower. <laughs> be a beautiful panoramic view. I can think of you know oh. every kid want to be sent up there. Rather Look at the front of this. this. Oh yeah, that's right. You'd want to act up. <laughs> You'd want to. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the, the bump out here in the front, isn't that something? Like, wow, wow. With the steps City, and eh? everything. Yeah, the, and another and one of those amazing wall arches. In the front yeah. here, too, along the edge of the property. It's like it's built up on a hill or something. Like, where's the, the like, usually these places have the narrative. Oh, yeah. Didn't yeah. Do this. It's, yeah, but they yeah. usually have a narrative that, oh, the German, German immigrants came over. <laughs> yeah, usually Italian immigrants or German immigrants came over. And that, that's the explanation for a lot of the, the brick and stonework, right? But Dodge City doesn't have that in their story. So this is from 1909, that, uh, that picture. So I like the old postcards sometimes. They do have a unique... I'll surprise us at Dodge film. City. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? This, yeah, interesting. And all, early on to 1914, I'll show you. Yeah, I got I'm about half way through the dodge city file here so you're gonna see more from the small town high school hmm. Hmm. yeah i mean you, you just get to a point where you, you keep seeing it and you know like well what else would it be post it office. needs to be something amazing oh yeah those, those amazing post offices we always had yeah now, yeah, like about a year ago when i first started making my videos a lot of this would kind of blow me away i'd almost be in like a state of like stunned a little bit because it's just so contrary to the narrative i don't get that feeling anymore i'm almost jaded to it <laughs> i just seen <laughs> seen so much of these and it just it's just post office yeah it's run of the mill now it's everywhere another post office you're telling us that this was a post office and and they're telling us that this is a post office which is maybe a weather center. Which is funny because every year it seems like they're saying the U.S. Postal Service is financially insolvent, and that's why they had to keep raising the prices of stamps and so forth. And yet they also do a free service for Amazon. So who knows what the real situation is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, early on, looking much more built out than it should. This place. No question about it. Well, that's a very uh, subtle and interesting yeah, Masonic. Not people. looking spectacular, but I had to throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe this is even drawn in. Maybe they took some of the, some of the fancy off of it. Who knows? Well, right. It's not the these, it's uh, not the real these characters people. are everywhere. It's be, everywhere. it's behind the photo, and they just wanted to say that building was it. <laughs> yeah, it's in behind. <laughs> <laughs> you never know right oh we saw this one already now it's the land office it's also the city hall we saw that one already yeah, it has its churches i'll try to roll through fairly quickly let me know if you want me to focus in on anything but 
<laughs> they even had St. Mary of the Plains College and High School all wrapped into one. It reminded me of Scholastica. Uh, yeah, this, this other large compound that's just out in the middle of nowhere, you know, that, that it's just, it's all over the place in the Midwest. I mean, that's one of the real telltale signs of me when you're in the Midwest is you get out in the middle of nowhere and you have this large compound and it's never a single building. It's a series of buildings that tend to be connected. And here you got the towers. It looks like you got columns on this and yeah, no problem. Just throw it up out there. Yeah, it's uh, too remote to do anything with, right? So I have to repurpose it. Weather Bureau. <laughs> so at what, at what point, I mean, yeah, whether check, check, testing the wind, I suppose. Another school, ward school, what does that mean? Well, I, it's, this comes up as well, third ward, first ward. I don't know even what that's referencing. I think it might have been a, seen it, it come up in a lot of it time. was a division, a statement of division that they supposedly had. A ward was similar to a geographical area division, similar to a township. I might be off on that, but um I think that's how they referred to it. Okay, yeah, I see. You know, because you only had three thousand people. Sure, that makes sense. You only had three thousand people, so you probably only had about five hundred kids, so you needed to have multiple wards <laughs> to get so all how many kids did you have? Yeah. <laughs> How many schools did you need, right? Quite a few, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. Yeah. Of course, the train stations and all that part of the old. Yeah. Never see a subtle train station anywhere either. Oh, I missed one here. Hospital. Protestant hospital. <laughs> all right. Get to a couple churches and I'll be done with Dodge City. I just thought this would be an interesting location because it's so small and remote. And blatantly obvious but like why why do you have columns on a church first methodist church in dodge city kansas i don't i don't you can't explain it with the typical narrative well one of my favorites was there was a basilica in milwaukee that they threw up in 1897 and they said they got the columns from the federal building in chicago but the problem was this federal building that they got these columns from didn't have any columns in oh, it it was shipped them out yep that's what they say <laughs> Oh, that's a pretty church. Yeah, well, you got to re repurpose those old buildings, right? The federal building. <laughs> what a joke. Okay, here's this is the end of my file. This is the end of my file. That's Dodge City in a nutshell at the turn of the century with only a handful of thousand people. So <laughs> make of it what you will, those of you watching this, but I'm not buying it. I don't, don't think Aurelian's buying it either. No, nope. <laughs> The more I see it, the more it becomes. You got time for a couple more? We can do a couple more real quick, sure. Okay, I'll uh, I'll focus in on a few locations and maybe we'll wrap it up. Keep it reasonable here. Um, this is I thought this was fitting with the uh, they call it a state hospital, but the, the asylum narrative that uh, so often pops up in our research and falls in line with what you've been talking about of those. Massive structures and remote locations that uh, make well, no first, sense. The first thing that really popped up, and it's the same thing with this obsession with towers you have. Why in the heck would you have four floors on a building that you're putting people who you say are a danger to themselves and others? Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Suicide. Yes, you make a good point. You make a good point. I've never heard that point brought up. That's a good point. I well, let's look at the right up here. Of course, the Kirkbride model, built in the Kirkbride model. Yeah, um, he wasn't. The ground was broken 1868. He wasn't just a doctor, he was an architect, too. You know, apparently people could do multiple things back then as well. <laughs> well, it was Dr. <laughs> Thomas. So Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride. <sighs> yeah, inheritors of the narrative. 68 to 74 so they, they're giving it a bit of time to go up um but we're in athens ohio 1868 to 1874 have a look at the population demographics for that time period <laughs> even if know. it was I, there's um, there must be an explanation i didn't actually find out well even if it was twenty three thousand like it is today i'm not buying this come on <laughs> 
no, no, but but we can go back to here, or you could count almost count the number of people living there on your hands. <laughs> so, who who built this? Look at this. There's the dome you were talking about. There's a there's one of those nice. I don't. Wow. Yeah. Anyway. You just can't dome it out enough. <laughs> Towers everywhere you look. Because those are easy yeah. to build. Even the massive chimneys. <laughs> yeah. The, oh. Yeah. And the, the chimneys are not just rectangular structures often. Off, they're often decoratively put together. Sometimes they've got swirls. Sometimes they've got these flares you know, flaring out to be wider at the top and everything is built beautifully in these old structures. Bit of tech on top here, those gates that you see often at the tops of uh, buildings. Mm -hmm. Nice fountain. So another hole in the narrative. There's your basement windows, right? Yeah. So excavation right away, right <laughs> away. We know we're going down into the dirt with oh. this structure. So... No, thank you. Not going to buy it. Another I'm not buying whatever they're selling. Here's a, yeah, one of the main halls. Yeah. Because we talk about finishing, right? And interior finishing. And this is one of the open areas in there. So who in Athens, Ohio? They, and then I, I mentioned this a lot in my videos as well. Um, sometimes people will try to explain, well, they didn't all have to be locals to build these. They were bringing in these experts or these these companies from the big cities to build these for them. It's like, well, you haven't looked at the narrative. My ex my answer to that is, well, you haven't looked at the narrative of the big city, which is also a bustling metropolis at the time, where all sorts of structures are being put together as well. So where are they pulling these workers from? Well, and, and if you really do the analysis it's happening on everywhere it, at the same what, time. Yeah, what, what you end up with is what has to be parallel and serial runs of construction going on in every city, every town, every flipping county across the United States, which was under limited population and also, by the way, still under threat from supposed Native American attacks. And you didn't have the infrastructure built. You didn't have roads. You didn't have running electricity. You didn't even have running water in a lot of these places. But yeah, sure. Everybody just moved around and did this kind of construction. And you know they, they did yeah. it all at the same time because yeah. it was all so easy. Ah. <laughs> Absurd. Absurd. Here's the day shift staff for the uh, the, the asylum. So very well very dressed. Interesting. So Athens, Ohio. Athens, Ohio. They are, yeah, they've done right up, aren't they? Yeah. I wonder what role the little uh, girl had. We'll go, let's go two more and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> Down here. Yeah, that's a good good point. The only child in this photograph, right? Yeah, and who's this? Is this Kirkbride? Yeah, maybe he he came there and he personally designed it. He came there and he personally designed it. He drew the architectural plan and supervised the construction in his spare time. Yeah, he's a great man. Great man. <laughs> he's everywhere. He's nowhere. <laughs> okay, let let's get. To, uh, let's move on to a brewery. We are in Dubuque. Oh my God, I can't even remember the state. Dubuque. That's Iowa. I've been to that brewery. It's still standing oh, yeah. this day. What state is Dubuque in? Iowa? Yep, it's in Iowa. It's right off the Mississippi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, do I have... Sorry. I just lost my place. Let me get it back. Here we go. No, that's the Athens County Courthouse. We skipped over that one. Um, here it is. The brewery in Dubuque. I, I, again, a, a ridiculous narrative around this this massive structure as well. Uh, I know the population is minimal in this location as well. So it's the same old story, and we can keep pulling out the numbers for and over, but really not making sense. Um, the vastness <laughs> of the structure, um, <laughs> looking similar to uh, an asylum, actually. You know that, you know, as I look at it. They, they couldn't tear these down either. They had to repurpose them. It's a brewery. Alcohol. <laughs> and then this. Yeah, well, I have my theories on alcohol and and, and how, how that contributes to the obscuring of, of, of the historical 
the truth about history, let's say, and uh, keeps it all hazy, I suppose. Good say. way to put it. So socially acceptable to uh, abuse alcohol. And that's where I have my, uh, yeah. Um, this is beautiful, though. Let's just look at some. This looking very run down now. You can see. Um, Look at that, though. Looking, feeling very old. It's very amazing old. that it still stands, honestly. And it's almost as though they don't want it to stand. And I did a video on breweries as well. Oh, yeah. They're always interesting to look at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking very... Let's all apply with it up now. All the, all the windows looking like... And painted, though. Mm -hmm. Painted to look like the brick? Yeah, I think so. I think they're just... That's they're plywood, trying... I think, right there, there, there. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you walk past it on site, it's like they're trying to keep it as subtle as possible, and just so people walk by it and oh, it's an old building, don't pay any attention to it. That seems to be the direction they've gone. Mm. Yeah, because why would you paint the plywood? Like maybe because it's unsightly if you just leave it unpainted. Maybe that's part <laughs> of. The, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We had contractors; we had to pay them. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're, the, they're having a good time here with their brewery. The, the humble little brewery. There's a tent in the background. Uh, yeah, but that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing a castle, the castle brewery. Uh, okay, let me move along. And I, I had quite a bit on here, so I'll just, uh, I'm going to go to one last building. And I think, and Which one did I want? I actually wanted to get into St. Louis. St. Louis is uh, was quite large at the time. The population of St. Louis having come down um, since the turn of the uh, 20th century. But St. Louis is an old world metropolis. I like to call it. Oh, yeah. Them. If not an old world capital. Amazing, amazing, the amazing structures in the city. Wow. This is the Union Station. <laughs> Absolutely. I, yeah. And, uh, uh, of course, it's the Union, Union Station. Station in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I love this the street scene here too. These feeling looking quite old. None of this infrastructure looking new at all, in my eyes. No, the photo looks like it's been there for let's, hundreds let's of years. Some of the narrative on this. Yeah. Opened on in September 1st, 1894, we are told, by the Terminal Railroad of St. Louis, designed by Theodore Link. Thank you, Theodore. Um, oh, the train shed. I'll get to the train shed, too. Massive. Unbelievable, the size of it, actually. Hotel, restaurant, Romanesque arches. <laughs> All the bells and whistles for the time, right? And if memory serves, 1894, a busy time in the uh, on the continent. If memory serves, I think it's still a shopping center today, and they had a Planet Hollywood or Hard Rock Cafe there. <laughs> have you have you been there? I've uh, been to St. Louis several times. It was a while ago though, so I'm shooting from the hip on memory. But uh, as I recall, and I think they even shot scenes from the movie Escape from New York with Kurt Russell, Snake Plissken in that uh, station when it was abandoned. Because that's where he goes and rescues the president. If you've ever seen that movie, uh, which is interesting, yeah, no, yeah, I have, and uh, that happens a lot as well. Using uh, old abandoned, uh, uh, um, old world structures for movies. I've seen that. That uh, I can't remember the movie now. There was one in Detroit. The train station in Detroit was used as well for a couple action movies. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, let's look at a couple of visuals here. So this is this is the structure we were just looking at out front, the castle. Mm. Here's the train shed out back, and then all the different train lines. Right, like, like that's that's enormous. That's an enormous facility. It would take quite quite the amount of work to uh, put all that together. Yeah, tower still a beauty today. And I love the little uh, the little side. Mm -hmm. Really, I, I'd love to go there and check this out. It would be, be uh, it's on my list. 
for sure. Although my list is getting longer the more I look into this research. My list of places to go check out is pretty much everywhere. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? You know, you I do have, I find I've been rejuvenated as far as... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's an inspiration to get into this type of research to uncover these things and check them out in real real life. I, I often wish I wasn't in such a remote location. <laughs> okay. Here's the in inside of the uh, that building. Wow. Because why not? Well, you have to keep up with the New Yorks and Chicago's. Oh well, yeah, right? of course. St. Louis. Yeah. Gateway. A little pride home. in architecture. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Beautiful. Stained glass. Beautiful. And what the heck? Right under our noses the whole time, eh? All what? of this. This is one of those things, too. What the heck does that have to do with anything remotely American when you see depictions like that? And it's all over the place, you know? It's like, oh, yeah, we, we're all about our Greek, with and, <laughs> our Greek and Roman gods and goddesses. You don't get more American than that. <laughs> Right. Uh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Stained glass too. Like, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, like what went into that? The modern day street scene. But the building. Look at the size of these blocks. Either, either that's a facade or that's a legitimate block. I don't know. Sometimes these are a bit of like a, a molded facade over red brick. But that's this. This is very. These are very large. These are car in the foreground here and you have these blocks here so this is serious serious work that's going on here and then the curve for the tower here mm -hmm. a bit of a curve well just the fact that you see those details that implies that those are real blocks. definitely appreciate that yeah and they have to have that kind of strength to hold up the weight of that structure mm. you know it's not a temporary world's fair structure right <laughs> that's right that's right yeah also, 130 years later, still stranding perfectly yes, strong. Yes, very pretty too. Right, looking looking fine, not looking run down at all. Mm -hmm. And then another, so you can kind of see the shed in the back here. You get yep. a sense size of the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's and this one also giving amazing. you an idea of how large this. This hangar structure would have had to have been. Yeah, right. Big open, like this, you're talking massive steel, I think cast iron, maybe wrought at, at that time. Uh, not we're not into the steel era at this point, according to the narrative. But uh you have to have the spans, they have to span a massive, massive amount. Jeez. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Piece of cake. Throw it up, no worries. <laughs> no problem there, right? We can do anything back then. We just can't do it now. Money. Oh boy. Later. Okay. <laughs> I think uh yes, no, we gotta wham bam, get it up as fast as you can. Right. And then <laughs> no no uh, thought for uh for how it might look. So a lot of these things that are uh um run down these days. Are run down, I think, because they've been been made to fall, been haven't been maintained. So you can, we can see a lot of these; they they easily stand the test of time. I think if if we want them to, so they're just a lot of have been scrubbed. I think from our uh, from our reality or our existence, I suppose you could say, in the in the modernization and the progressive um, movement of our time. But uh, as we look into these old old photographs um, and postcards. We still get a sense that there was much more in the past than uh, than uh, we have been told. So, yeah, without a doubt, I'm here to poke holes in the narrative. It looks like Aurelian's poking holes in the narrative as well. <laughs> Not stop anytime. <laughs> Any parting shots before uh, we? Sign up? Nope. Uh, just I really appreciated uh, doing this exploration together, and uh, thank you for the invite. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and um, hopefully we can do it again sometime. All right. You take care. You too.